Casey and Romeo. Monday through Saturday from 5.30 to 10 a.m. on 93.5 K-Day. It's 935 K Day. Yes. Listen, I'm actually excited, Romeo. This is our first Zoom interview. We zooming right now. Yes, our first. Zoom, zoom. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, first of all, we want to say congratulations. Felipe Esparza is joining us today. And not only are you joining us, but you are making history, you know, as a Latino on Netflix. Let's talk about it. I'm so proud of you, by the way. Thank you. Yes, I have two specials, not just one. Uh oh. Spanish and English, bad decision and malas decisiones for people out there who don't speak English or don't speak Spanish. There's right. two of them. Or if you want to learn the lingo, watch them both and compare them. Look how to speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, uh, a lot of people make bad decisions, but yes. this bad decision was great for you, Felipe Esposa. Trust me. Definitely great for you. But before we get into talking about the show, how you been holding it down, man, through this pandemic? It's been tough, man, because... My son has been using the computer all day for classes on Zoom. Yes. My wife works on Zoom. I got to do my podcast on Zoom. <laughs> By the time it's late, late at night to watch porn, the computer is uh -uh. too hot. <laughs> <laughs> what you have a wife for? Exactly. You don't need Jeez. that, cabrón. <laughs> the computer is too hot. <laughs> and my wife, she, has like a, she does all the homeschooling at home, you know? Yeah. Like the principal, the dean, the guiding counselor, she had an MBA. <laughs> I have a half a GED. Like I completed, but I didn't mail it. <laughs> so I, I gotta be the janitor of the class. Oh <laughs> the janitor. My God. Wow. You I'm are like the fool. custodian, bro. Oh, wow. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the lunch lady at the house. <laughs> and it's sad because whenever my son doesn't want to do his homework, yeah. my wife looks at me like a real teacher and says, you want to be a loser like that guy outside sweeping? <laughs> you want to be a custodian? Uh, but at least she said that and say and doesn't say you want to be like your dad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey Felipe, I want to ask you like, how much do you miss being at the Dodger Stadium Come right on. about now? Come on, them Dodger games. How much do you miss that? Man, I miss being at Dodger Stadium. I miss being at Left Field Pavilion with the real crowd. Cause mm. Left Field Pavilion. People don't know that we don't have seats over there. It's all benches. <laughs> like everybody has a nice chair. Like people don't know. Like when when people come from out of town and go to Left Field Pavilion, mm -hmm. they're looking for their seats. No, bro, they ain't no seats, bro. It's a big bench. But y'all gotta just sit your ass on it. <laughs> and don't stare at bald heads, okay? Look forward. <laughs> watch the game. Don't watch the people. Watch the game. Wow. <laughs> Got to stay focused on the game so you don't get your ass whooped. I understand. I understand, Felipe. Uh, so let's talk about this. You went to TJ before you did this new special. Mm -hmm. What was the purpose for that? Because um, I was doing stand-up comedy here in L.A. and San Diego, Riverside, Pomona, mm -hmm. Colton. But a lot of the people that were coming to the show, they were also English speakers. And whenever I messed up a word... They laugh because they messed up that word too. And they thought it was funny that I was messing it up. Mm -hmm. But when I got to Mexico, whenever I messed up a Spanish word, they heckled me and said, Hey, habla bien, wey. O vete para atrás a tu país. Don't tell me, like, talk right or go back to your country. Damn. <laughs> hey, man, when a Mexican guy tells you go back to your country, it's serious. <laughs> <laughs> now, in the special, you talk about missing your dog when you're out partying. Uh, first of all, I'm a dog lover. I yes. have my fur babies. Uh, what kind of dog did you have? Yeah. I have a, I have two pet bulls. My man. There you go. I got a blue nose. Yeah, man. I have a blue nose. They're rescue dogs. You mm. know, they're over there sleeping, you know, keeping me chilly. Oh, my oh, God. How yeah. cute are they? They're I not, love yeah, it. Yeah, man. They came, they came in real bad. Uh, the one on the right, Henry. His name is Henry Chanaski. Like, um, <laughs> that's Charles Bukowski's um, pen name in um, all his books. Yeah. But Henry, somebody dropped off Henry at the shelter, and he was bleeding from his groin, and then a bunch of bumps, and his, man, he was bleeding. Like, somebody just tied him up at the shelter, and they felt bad. A woman picked him up and took him home, and I said, you know what? Um, I'll take care of that, dog. But you feel bad like when you have a dog because like it's not like when you have a kid you know like if your son is sick you still go out partying eh? you know you're gonna be all, <laughs> you know it's just a toothache you're gonna be all right yeah but an animal man you know you keep thinking about it man 
That- my dog's on life support right now at home. I should go home. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's true puppy love right there. You know what? Uh, the hell with the kid. I'm going to get home to my to my dog. Wow. All right, let's talk about this. Speaking of family, is it difficult, like, telling stories and telling jokes about your family? Ooh, it's difficult yes. because it's difficult because I talk about domestic violence mm-hmm. on my joke. I talk about a night that I don't know. Hopefully, not a lot of people have witnessed their father come home in a drunk, jealous rage, and wakes everybody up and becomes a battle royal against Andre the Giant. And but when I talk about domestic violence, mm-hmm. some people I don't know if some people some people are gonna take it like I'm promoting domestic violence or you're talking about domestic violence. But see, when you watch a movie on, on A&E mm-hmm. and you see a movie about domestic violence, the writer that the writer went through domestic violence, but he chose to make it into a movie, you know, or some people go through domestic violence and they choose to write about it in a book in a positive way. I chose to talk about it in, in a comedy show because I'm a comedian. That's the only outlet I have. I don't know no other way to talk about right. it. You know, That's my healing way. Yeah. And my brother and I, we talked about this uh, last week on the podcast, and it took us 40 years to talk about this that happened to us. So I feel like I did something good talking about it because a lot of people... It took you... I'm, I'm sorry, Felipe. It took you 40 years to talk about it. How did it feel just to even release it? Because after 40 years and you talked about it, you must have felt like you had this weight off your shoulders. Yeah, man. It still hurts sometimes. You know, like I, when, when I was talking about it with my brother, I remember him laying on the ground, you know, he was like four or six. And my, my dad punched him and he was like his, he was he was out of breath. Like, mm. come on, man. My dad weighed 260, my brother weighed what, 87 pounds? So yeah, man. Mm. But my brother and I, we joke about it now because I remember looking at my dad in a wheelchair and me and my brother looked at him going, man, we should beat him up right now, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> Remember it's that funny, one, but like, it's not funny. Be, you know what I'm saying? I, I said, even feel we, bad laughing. Because we should take off those tennis balls off that wheelchair and roll him down the stairs wow. and collect that social security. Did you really just say the tennis balls off the wheelchair? Oh, my Come goodness, on, man. right? <laughs> Bro, let me tell you, man. People don't understand that domestic violence can happen anywhere. My, I had an uncle that was in a wheelchair, mm-hmm. and he used to beat his wife, bro. He used to get her in the corner and be like, <laughs> I don't know if there was audio real, of that or not, but it right. was like, I'm like, what was that? What? I just saw the motion to a hand slap. <laughs> For real, bro. And my uncle, he was in a wheelchair, and um, he used to have sex in a wheelchair, bro. Oh, really? Like, my aunt will get on top of him, and then they'll push him down the stairs. Oh my God! I don't even want that, to. That's yo, horrible. No, I, got, I get it. I, I saw got the, the visual. vision. Yes, we I saw got the, the visual. visual, bro. So that's how it is, man. Some some people will look for hotels. My uncle will look for fire escapes. <laughs> I'm I'm done. I'm done with your Felipe ass. Felipe was it doing the yes. most? Uh, has there been a bad decision that you didn't tell us yet or haven't talked about? Oh yeah, bro, man. Uh oh. Uh oh. Give us the exclusive, Felipe. Friends and I, we were in spring break, but we didn't go to college, but it was just spring break. And um, we were in like Ensenada. And you know how you meet women in Ensenada from different parts of the world. Mm-hmm. Right. And then, so I thought, you know, I thought, you know, like, well, this is cool. You know, this chick is, you know, I should have thought about it first, you know, when she beat me in an arm wrestle. But um, she ended up being a man, you know, a man. Whoa. You know, that's your best. I was, I was buzzed. And how I, did you I should find have been out? The first, that, that, well, I should have found out when she beat me in that arm wrestle. <laughs> you didn't, so <laughs> how did up. you, though? Oh, we started kissing, and then like oh. we're, we, were, we were bumping mics. and um, oh. That's how you found out? And then I, my friend kept saying, hurry up, man, hurry up. Don't be so greedy. So I let my friend go at it. He started kissing her, too. I didn't say nothing. Then on the way home, my friend was crying, driving. <laughs> He said, how come you didn't say nothing? Because now I know you can keep a secret, fool. <laughs> hey, it's it like Tupac said, it ain't no fun that the homie can't have none. Well, uh, depending on what that is. Right, though. exactly. Yeah. I don't think that homie wanted that. <laughs> but listen, I got to ask you, if you have to choose between uh, one of these two comedians, who would it be, Richard Pryor or George Carlin? Mm. <sighs> I want to say Richard Pryor, man. Uh-oh, okay. Legendary right there. 
You already yeah. know that. You yes. already know that. Man, oh man, he set the bar really, they're both, really high. They're both great, but you got to go with the realist, you know, Richard. They both started off, they have the, they both have the same careers, similar life, but different lives. Um, mm-hmm. Richard Pryor started off trying to be like Bill Cosby, and then he found his place when he walked out of a show in, in um, Las Vegas, and he came back as the real Richard Pryor we know now. Mm-hmm. And George Carlin started off as an impersonator. You know, oh, he, used wow. to imitate, he used to imitate JFK. And then after JFK passed away, he couldn't do that impersonation no more. So he had to become George Carlin, what George Carlin is now. But I still choose Richard Pryor because he speaks to me, you know, especially his jokes about you can never get an ambulance in the ghetto unless you call up and say, five black people killing a white woman. Where's the body? <laughs> pull up real quick. Real quick. All right? Uh, Cece and I want to pull up to your podcast. What's up with the what's up, fool? What's up, fool? What's up with the podcast? What's up, Full Podcast? We just had Rob Schneider. We had um, actor uh, actor Oscar Torre. And we have my brother who's living in a halfway house in Tijuana on the podcast. Really? No, you don't. Are you serious? How's that working Bro, out? I have my brother on the podcast, and he tried to hide that, you know, try to hide with the camera. Right. But I started looking around, and I said, wait a minute, man. There is too many quotes here. <laughs> There is too many affirmations ambition. hanging on there the There is walls, too many yeah. quotes here for ambition. You know what I mean? Wow. There was, once I started noticing positive quotes mm-hmm. and I saw a bunk bed, I knew he was in a halfway house. Wow. But he's doing good. He's been sober um, six months, eight years. Oh, wow. Not bad for a guy who had 10 or 15. Mm, mm, mm. Not bad at right, all. Let me ask you. I got to ask you. Now that you have two specials, the first Mexicano, you know, to have an English and Spanish comedy yeah. uh, series on Netflix. Now you have Spanish and English. I have to ask you because I love Netflix. Do they give you free membership, Felipe? Be honest. Let me tell you, man. No. Oh, what? Uh, and, what? And it, it just goes out for everything out there, man. Like even the Dodgers. When I, I remember asking this Dodger player, um, Ismael Valdez, hey, do they give you free tickets? He goes, nope, I got to pay. No and way, this goes, that goes for everybody out there who's listening, man. The <laughs> radio station is given a limited amount of tickets to promote the concert. And and you're not colored 316, you're going to get it. Eh? Thank you for saying that because everybody thinks that we have the hookup All and we can time. pull these tickets out and just give them. And it's like, no, we yeah. have rules and, to abide by. And, also, stop walking up to um, CC and Romeo when they're doing their normal lives, shopping around at the at, at the grocery store, uh, yeah. and saying, "How come you never pick up my line? We don't know that." <laughs> yeah, I'm just in Northgate minding my own business. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm at Walmart going shopping. I'm just trying to get my groceries at Walmart, man. For real, for real. All right, I gotta ask you this, Fluffy. I mean, yeah, for, see what I see where I'm going with this? I gotta ask you this. You yes. and Fluffy is a real beef. Oh. Oh, no, it's not real beef. When I did the podcast with that guy, he wanted to promote the podcast. And, like, I was talking about, you know, and then I was t- but uh, talking about other stuff. Uh-huh. And he did what he had to do to promote his podcast, and it's working. So, hey. Oh, that's oh, – so, listen. Uh, that see, it's like when – it's, right it's, like when it's like when you – it's like when I got stuck uh, – I got stuck on an article the other day. Mm-hmm. It said – and say that I'm Costanza Sue Seinfeld. So I went over there and I thought it was George Costanza suing Seinfeld, but no, it was a guy named Michael Costanza who was suing Seinfeld because they thought he was saying that George Costanza was taken from his life. So I got <laughs> duped. <laughs> I got to ask you, because I love the series, and um, I'll watch it, but I want to know, like, is there going to be a new season of Hentified in the works, and will you be on it? I know that we're dealing with Mm COVID-19 right now, but, you know, we got to be creative, and people love Hentified. And honestly, Felipe, people love you on Hentified. Like, you are the comedy on that series. The face. Yes. Yes, man. I really love that show, too. I like the way that came out. I I didn't like the way that they filmed me from the side, you know, it's not my whole gut, but... (laughs) That was still good. Really? Really? That bothered you? I was you? like, I, I, I told the director, man, hey, I'll, I'll do it, but don't film me from the side. Oh, my God. Get a, I, listen, get a, I feel you. A, don't film me from the side either. I said, uh, don't film me walking away, getting up, picking up something, looking up. You know, I don't want to see all this. So, um, 
<laughs> you know what's embarrassing about doing that show? What? When I got to, when I went to go get fitted for the costume, mm-hmm. I was wearing the same clothes they were giving me. Oh what? my god. <laughs> What? You are it's the like character. You, in, you are the character. It's like you going in for Romeo, and they have the same stuff you're wearing. Like, oh wow, <laughs> I was meant for that robe. Like, and, when, and, and when I was leaving, security guard called me and said, "You gotta take back your clothes. These are mine, homie." <laughs> Felipe is too much. Listen, uh, the special um, Felipe will be released in 109 countries, and it's in 109 countries. Crazy. Can you tell us like how that even? Feels like a hundred. Yeah. I'm sorry, 190 countries. My bad. 190. Me siento muy orgulloso. I feel very proud, man. I feel like I accomplished something for myself mm-hmm. because I try to set goals for myself. You know, that way if I could get there, you know, I feel good and I try to better. I try to like compare myself to five years ago to see mm. where I'm at. You know what I mean? I like and that. I, if I if I'm not where I'm at. I start hating on myself, like, but you're a loser, man. You're gonna go, you're going backwards. You don't, you don't know how to use Doom, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, you right now, man. Look, you've Zoom. accomplished so much. Like, what's your next challenge? What's your next goal you want to reach, Felipe? Right now, um, my uh, my friend, a friend of mine, comedian, actor from Mexico, Omar Chaparro. Mm-hmm. We're um, we're uh, produ- we're uh, pitching uh, a sitcom about him and I playing brothers. Wow. And, and we um we we already had a lot of meetings with Netflix and all the other networks, so we're waiting for a yes or a no from everybody right now. Well, mm. listen, I'm a I can go ahead and bet on Netflix. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you yeah. you seem to be you know what I mean the guy that got all the shows on Netflix. Come Why on. not? And we would definitely love to see a series like that. Definitely. Yeah, man. Or just be like Tyler Perry, man. Get that sixty ninety deal. Why not? <laughs> and can I be that's honest, Felipe? Can I be for honest? real, man? When you you they, they give you like. All right, Tyler Perry, you have your own studio. You know, I, I, we, had, we had a guy in a podcast uh-huh. last night who's working with Tyler Perry on the Have Nots. Mm-hmm. Um, Oscar Torre, he plays a drug dealer on the show. He said, check this out. Tyler Perry is building his own freeway on his Tyler Perry studio so he won't have to rent out a whole city. <laughs> What the hell? But he was kidding, right? Please tell no, me. No, he's not kidding. So he's serious. This, this is really going down. Bro, Tyler Perry bought an old army fuck, yeah. uh, army regiment. Yes, he did. He yeah. built a city in it. He had a he built a, a duplicate of the White House inside Tyler, inside the studio that looks exactly like the White House. Mm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. While everybody's get- while everybody is sleeping. He's still shooting. He has everybody quarantined inside the town. Yeah. Well, He's look, about it. Tyler Perry's in Atlanta, Georgia, and I love me some Tyler Perry. But Felipe Esparza, we need a studio in Boyle Heights. What's going on? Mm. Man, I, re- I already live in a studio, so. <laughs> I live in a- I'm done. I'm I used done. to live in a studio. This guy. <laughs> this guy is Hey, hot, let me man. tell you something. First of all, we- we've done interviews and done a lot of Zoom interviews and stuff like that, right? Uh, you have the best Wi-Fi ever. Like, you are so clear. I'm tripping right now, dude. Yeah, you are. Are you serious? Thank clear. you. Clear. Love it. I in your like studio. I friendly ghost. <laughs> We want that mask though, for real though. You got to send us I look that like mask. Danny Trejo. I look like Danny Trejo in drag. Wow. <laughs> I'm not even gonna answer that. I'm Come just, on, I'm just man. not gonna Don't answer do Danny that. Like that. Hey, real quick, you can. They can buy those masks. Yes, you can buy this mask at Felipe's World Shop. Okay. They're twenty dollars. Most of the money will go for um, charity. That's my um, mom's name, Charita. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. This and, uh, it's a hot mess. <laughs> you're a badass mess, man, because um, a lot of people are dealing with bad breath. These come with a little hole, and you can put some toothpaste in there, man. You can smell your minty breath. Nice. Hey, man, thank yes. you so much for stopping by. You know what I'm saying? We appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? You're Zooming with us. Have fun at the house with the family. You know what I mean? And much continued success, man. You definitely doing it big. Thank you, Felipe. As, you know, a Mexicana, you make me so, so proud. And we salute you on making history on Netflix. So congratulations. Bad decisions. Yes, man. Let's do it. And I hope um, other comedians do it also. I I don't want to be the only one. Mm. I hope everybody could do this. Also do a Spanish one. And we could all go on tour all over the world and get paid. Yes, Mm. let's do it. Get that money. Let's do oh, it. Yeah. There it is. Felipe Esparza. We appreciate you, man. Come on. What's up, boo? Hey. hey. <laughs>